Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to perform basic analyses and manipulation of your data using the perform analysis function or the perform analysis tool as seen up here. The perform analysis function on ArcGIS Online allows users to access a range of virtual tools that make analysis and measurement of geographic relationships possible. This is useful as maps are used to identify patterns and relationships, assess trends and make decisions. This is called spatial analysis. In this instructional video, you will learn how to use some of the analysis tools in order to create simple yet useful manipulations to your data in order to identify patterns and relationships, assess trends and make decisions. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that performing analyses will use your organisational credits. You can view your organization's credits by clicking on the organization tab, then the overview tab, and viewing the credits section in the top right of your screen. Administrators can manage credits in a number of ways, including allocating specific quantities of credits to each member or student. Administrators can also monitor their members' credit usage through dashboards, charts, and reports by clicking the view status button. If your organization is part of the GIS for Schools program, it will begin with 30,000 credits. If these credits are managed well, this will be a substantial amount to see you through to the end of the license term. In today's video tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create a choropleth map using the analysis tool in ArcGIS Online. A choropleth map is quite simply a thematic map that uses different colors and shades to represent statistical data. A choropleth map is often split into a geographic area like country, state, or local government areas like this one here. In order to create our Choropleth map in ArcGIS Online, we first need data. If you don't have some data ready to go, you can access our training Choropleth Maps CSV document, which is in close proximity to the link you clicked on for this video. Now our first job is to add this data into ArcGIS Online. So we can go back to our map, click on add, click add layer from file, and choose the file that we're after in this case training Choropleth Maps. We hit open and we import our layer. And it's going to ask us to identify how it's going to map our locations. We're going to click on addresses or places. We're going to look for world and select world. And then next to our African country attribute column, we're going to click not used and change that to country and then click on add layer. And it will come up with a bit of a warning that two addresses couldn't be mapped. In this case, that's OK, and we're going to click OK. Now, because we're creating a Choropleth map, we don't actually need to style our data for this video. So we're just going to click Done to put the styling uh, option away. And now, before we go to our analysis function, we first need another layer. So we're going to search for layers. And we're going to change it from My Content to ArcGIS Online. And because we're working at a country's level, we need boundary layers that are of a country nature. So we're going to type in World Countries. And I've used this one before. I recommend that if you're looking to create a Choropleth map, you always use this one, World Countries Generalized by Esri. And we're going to click the plus button and add it to the map. And it might take a little bit of time to do that but you see that it pops up quite quickly and we're going to turn both of these layers off for now. Now before we get to this analysis function I just want to point out that in order to uh, create a Choropleth map we are going to be joining two feature layers or two map layers together. In order to do that and in order to join these two map layers together we need to make sure that the one of their attributes is matching. So if we click on show table for training and Choropleth maps, we notice that we have our locational data with African countries listed in here, Algeria, Angola, uh, Botswana, for instance. I'm going to close that table and I'm going to open up our world countries attributes table. And whilst the headings aren't the same, we do have uh, countries in here. And if I was to click uh, and sort ascending, I should be able to see some of our African countries in here, Algeria and Angola. So that's great. We have matching attributes, which means that 
the two feature layers here are going to be able to join, be joined into one using our analysis function to create that choropleth map. So it's really important that those attributes, that attributes in two feature layers match. If you're working uh, with data from Australian local government areas, then you wouldn't be looking for this world countries layer. You would need to go and search for a layer on Australian local government areas to fit your purpose. We're going to go back over to Africa and now we're ready to begin creating our Coralpleth map now that we understand why the two features need to share an attribute. So we're going to click on analysis, we're going to click on summarize data and to create Coralpleth maps we're looking for this join features option. We're going to click on that and we want our data to be uh, put onto the world country's generalized map layer. So that's our target layer. If I put this world country's layer down the bottom, then it's not going to work. The world country's layer or the layer with the country boundaries needs to be on top. Now the choose layer to join to target, we are looking for our Coropleth map data, which in this case is our training data. So we're going to click on that and enable that. For select the type of join, we want to choose a spatial relationship and we can leave it as intersex. We're going to leave it join one to one and we're going to leave all of this information the same. And we're going to create a more reasonable name for our data. In this case, I know that the data that we are using shows both population of African countries and total cases of malaria in African countries. I'm going to want to show the total cases of malaria, so I'm going to type that in as my result name, total cases of malaria. And you need to choose a location for your analysis to uh, save in. And before you hit run analysis, you will notice that this checkbox is checked, which, mean, uh, which says use current map extent. Now if I was zoomed in for any weird reason and I kept that checked, then when the analysis function occurs, anything that is visible in this map extent right now would be the only thing that is created as a Coropleth map. So we don't want to do that. We want to always uncheck this just in case. But I mean, I would normally be working at this extent anyway because I want to see all of Africa. But uncheck that, otherwise what you see on your map is the only area that will be uh, ran under that analysis. And then you need to click Run Analysis once you're happy with everything there. And it usually takes uh, a little bit of time, maybe one to two minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection because it is in the process of joining these two tabs. Now a bit of a reminder whilst it does load, we need to be careful with how we use our credits. And if you have uh, classes of students and you're teaching them this, that's fine, but just be aware that every time someone uses an analysis tool, a little bit of your school's credits are going to be used. Now when this pops up, it's going to pop up with some blue uh, boundaries of each of the countries and it's not going to look like a Coropleth map straight away. We're going to have to style that data using this change style icon to style it the way we want it to appear. And you'll notice that it's disappeared for a second here. It's going to pop up in just a second. There we go. And just like I said, we've got these blue country boundaries. We need to go to that change style icon, the triangle, square and circle. Click on that and we need to choose what attribute we're going to show. Because I've named my result total cases of malaria, I want to choose that option in my attributes. Total cases. And allowing it to load. We're not going to choose counts and amounts size this time. We want to choose counts and amounts color because we're aiming at creating that Coralpleth map. So we're going to select this one. And you can see that automatically it's began to try and create that Coralpleth map for us. But we're going to make some additional changes by clicking options. And by scrolling down, it's very similar to how we've changed style with regular data. We're going to classify our data. And you can choose how, how you want your data to occur, natural breaks, equal intervals, etc. 
and you can choose how many classes you would like. I'm going to choose five classes. And I'm going to scroll back up and I can make my own color set by clicking on each of these and changing it to a color choice or I can actually use some pre-prepared uh, color symbols that ArcGIS Online has prepared for us. So I might go with this color scheme and hit OK and I can see how it appears and if I'm not happy with that I can go back in and choose a new one. But I'm happy with that and I'm going to hit OK hit OK to lock it in and hit done. If you don't hit OK and done to lock it in, when you if you exit it, it's not going to have been saved as that Coropleth map style. Now, you may be noticing, why is there no Coropleth for Sudan, Egypt and Libya? Quite simply because when I sourced this uh, data for total cases of malaria, there was no data for these three areas. And that might be for a number of reasons, the first being that there simply wasn't any malaria in those countries. Other reasons might include things like uh, the unavailability of data due to war or famine, etc. But as you can see here, we've created a Chloropleth map of uh, total cases of malaria in Africa, and I can see what those colors mean by clicking on that Legends tab. Now, if I had data for the world, I would have created Instead of uh, all of the other countries simply disappearing, I'll turn this one back on for a second and turn this off. Instead of all of these other country boundaries disappearing, if I had data for all countries in the world, then upon creating my or running my analysis and joining those features, every country would have a shade of color. But because I only had data for Africa, when my analysis is complete, the only data that appears is the cases of malaria for Africa. And there you have it. Creating Coropleth maps is quite simple. You just need to remember that you need to have your own data set ready to go and that the boundary uh, areas that you bring in and that you search for in ArcGIS Online have an attribute, so in this case countries, that match your original data set. Okay, so we had our countries, our African countries, matching our original data set and matching this world countries map layer. Thank you for listening and feel free to access the online document to take you through a step-by-step -step walkthrough.